The flickering holographic display cast strange shadows across Riss's face as he analyzed the energy readings. It's accelerating, he murmured, his brow furrowed in concern. The catalyst cascade is intensifying, faster than anticipated. Beside him, Kira leaned closer, her gaze fixed on the vibrant blue and crimson currents swirling within the display. The erratic patterns pulsed with unsettling intensity, like a heart beating too rapidly, threatening to burst its fragile confines. What do you think it means? she asked, her voice barely audible above the hum of their makeshift lab. Reese tapped a few keys, summoning a holographic map of their sector. Red dots blinked erratically across the surface, converging on a single point, the abandoned research station orbiting planet Xylos. This wasn't supposed to happen, he said, his voice tight with frustration. The cascade was meant to be controlled, contained. It shouldn't be influencing this many systems, let alone spreading so rapidly. Kira looked from the map back to Riss. Is it dangerous? Riss hesitated, the weight of responsibility heavy on his shoulders. Potentially catastrophic, he replied finally. The cascade amplifies reality itself, distorts energy, bends space-time. If it spirals out of control, he trailed off, unable to voice the terrifying implications. So what do we do? Kira asked, her eyes burning with an unwavering determination. He met her gaze, his own hardening with resolve. We go to Xylos, he said, his voice firm. We need to find out what triggered this surge, what's happening in the abandoned facility. It might be our only chance to stop it before the entire sector. He took a deep breath, unwilling to finish the sentence. He scanned their cramped lab, checking their supplies, the energy dampeners, the portable shield generator, the makeshift weapon prototypes. We need to prepare, he said, his voice regaining its usual calm efficiency. But we cannot waste time. The cascade is gaining momentum. Every hour counts. Kira adjusted the strap on her biopack, the faint hum of its internal systems a familiar comfort. Anything interesting coming up on scanners? She asked, her gaze focused on the array of dials and blinking lights arrayed across their makeshift control panel. Reese tapped a few keys, bringing a tactical overlay onto their screen. Red blips danced erratically across the display, representing unidentified energy signatures emanating from Xylos's abandoned research station. There's something massive resonating within the facility, he said, his brow creased in concentration. It's fluctuating, a chaotic, almost sentient energy pattern. Kara shivered despite herself. The thought of an uncontrolled intelligence amplified by the catalyst cascade sent a wave of unease through her. We need to be careful. She pulled on her helmet, securing it firmly against her head. What if things go sideways out there? Riss met her eyes, his expression stoic, but laced with a deep concern she'd come to recognize as his signature trait during these high-risk operations. Then we adapt, he said, his voice steady and resolute. We rely on our training, our equipment, and each other. He checked the readouts of their biopacks, small but potent energy generators that helped them withstand the unpredictable effects of the cascade. The dampeners should offer some protection against its most volatile fluctuations, he murmured more to himself than her. But we need to stay focused, work quickly, and leave nothing to chance. He adjusted the settings on their customized jump packs, the hydraulic hum a quiet affirmation that they were ready for liftoff. Ready when you are, Kira, he said, his hand resting momentarily on hers before both of them flipped the activation switch simultaneously. The launch thruster engaged, throwing them forward with a jolt as they blasted out of their makeshift docking bay and into the uncertain atmosphere of Xylos. The Xylos research station loomed ahead, a skeletal silhouette against the bruised crimson sky. Decades of neglect had left scars on its metallic hull, gaping holes where panels had long since fallen away, jagged fissures snaking across its surface like veins of exposed circuitry. Brace for impact, Kira, Reese's voice crackled through their comms. Their modified jump packs bucked and jolted as they pierced the station's decaying atmosphere, maneuvering around fragments of wreckage that rained down ominously in the station's wake. Kira gritted her teeth, fighting the disorienting force that threatened to wrench her from her seat. They slammed onto a landing platform littered with debris. Twisted metal sheets, corroded hoses, and shattered remnants of equipment 
that hinted at whatever experiments had been conducted there before its abandonment. Sensors indicate intense energy fluctuations emanating from the main lab, Reese reported as he started diagnostics on their gear. Whatever caused this surge is probably concentrated there. Kira activated her helmet's thermal visor, painting the surrounding area in ghostly shades of heat, luminescent red and pulsating orange signifying dangerously high temperatures concentrated within the station's fractured husk. She pointed towards a partially collapsed access shaft leading down. Let's go. This isn't going to fix itself. Inside, the main lab was a chaotic graveyard of fallen equipment. Glass tubes drip with strange luminescent fluid, their contents slowly pulsing like miniature suns. Data crystals lay shattered on the floor, their once organized information now fragmented and distorted by the cascade's influence. My readings confirm it. This wasn't just an accident, Riss said. His voice strained as he navigated through the debris. Whoever was conducting these experiments deliberately activated the cascade amplifier. Kira noticed a central control panel seemingly untouched amidst the chaos. Its multifaceted screen flickered with distorted energy signatures, chaotic bursts of color that resembled lightning striking against a storm-ridden sky. There, she exclaimed, pointing at the screen where an unidentified icon pulsed erratically. The source of this surge. As she reached for it, a chilling voice echoed through the lab. Do not touch, Kira froze her hand hovering inches from the pulsating icon. A cold dread slithered down her spine, replacing the adrenaline that had fueled their descent into the derelict station. She glanced at Riss, searching his face for any sign of what this new development meant, but his expression mirrored her own confusion and apprehension. The voice, devoid of warmth or malice, resonated from within the machinery surrounding the control panel. It wasn't a voice she could place, human, synthesized, or something else entirely. Explain yourselves, it commanded. State your purpose within these walls. Reese moved swiftly, taking a defensive stance beside her while maintaining a calm demeanor. He activated his comm unit, hoping to broadcast their presence and intentions. Unknown entity within the main lab, he reported, his voice tinged with caution, requesting immediate support. Static crackled in response, the silence deepening the unsettling atmosphere. Who are you? Kira demanded, her voice echoing through the vast, empty laboratory. What happened here? The control panel hummed, and for a brief moment, the fragmented energy signatures on its screen seemed to coalesce into a rudimentary form, a series of shifting glyphs that pulsed with an eerie light. This is a sanctum, the voice responded, each word enunciated with chilling precision. A repository of knowledge. You trespass. Rhys exchanged a quick glance with Kira his eyes betraying a mixture of determination and anxiety. He knew they couldn't risk engaging this unknown entity directly, not without understanding its motives and capabilities. He activated the override function on their biopacks, enhancing their physical strength and reflexes. Their mission was to contain and study the Cascade's effects, not engage in a conflict that could potentially destabilize the entire dimensional grid but they couldn't simply stand by while this enigmatic entity threatened them. We didn't intend any harm, Reese stated, choosing his words carefully. We are scientists, researchers investigating the anomalous energy readings emanating from this station. Your presence is an anomaly, the voice replied, its tone unwavering. My directive is to protect this knowledge. Your interest in it suggests a potential threat. Kira knew they were walking a tightrope, any wrong move could escalate the situation. We pose no threat, she insisted, raising her hands in a gesture of peace. We only seek understanding. Understanding, the voice echoed, dripping with skepticism. The control panel pulsed brighter, its glyphs swirling and rearranging themselves into complex, intricate patterns. Then prove your sincerity. Step away from the console. Explain why this knowledge should concern you. Riss exchanged a troubled glance with Kira. Stepping away from the pulsating energy core was risky. It felt like pulling back a curtain, revealing something both magnificent and terrifying. But advancing further seemed even more precarious. The cascade is a dimensional anomaly, Riss began, carefully choosing his words. It's destabilizing interdimensional boundaries and causing unpredictable energy fluctuations across countless worlds. 
He glanced at Kira for support. Understanding its source and mechanisms is crucial to containing it before catastrophic events occur. Kira nodded in agreement. We're not here to exploit this knowledge, she added, her voice calm and steady. Our goal is to safeguard all worlds affected by the cascade. Silence descended upon the laboratory again, broken only by the rhythmic hum of machinery and Kira's own strained breathing. Each second stretched like an eternity, every flicker of the control panel sending a fresh wave of tension through their veins. Finally, the voice responded, its tone seemingly shifting, a hint of curiosity replacing its previous coldness. Safeguard, an admirable sentiment, yet your methods seem questionable. It paused, then continued, your actions here on Xylos, they have disrupted my delicate task. Riss tensed, ready to interject, but Kira held up a hand. We understand that we've interfered with your work, Thee, she acknowledged, but we seek to collaborate, not antagonize. Her gaze remained fixed on the pulsing control panel, searching for any clue into the entity's true intentions. Collaboration? The voice seemed skeptical. Such a novel concept. What can two fragile beings offer me that could be of value in this grand scheme? Riz took a step forward, his determination unwavering. We possess knowledge and expertise acquired through centuries of scientific exploration, he asserted. Our understanding of dimensional physics, energy manipulation, and intergalactic communication is extensive. He met the entity's gaze with resolute eyes. Together, we might be able to unravel the mysteries of the cascade. Kira nodded in agreement, her voice firm and clear. We are not here to exploit or conquer, she added. Our goal is preservation, the preservation of knowledge, the safeguarding of all worlds, and the fostering of understanding between disparate dimensions. A tense silence stretched between them, thick with the anticipation of the entity's response. The pulsating glyphs on the control panel continued their frenetic dance, as if agitated by the exchange. The voice finally broke the silence its tone a mix of curiosity and cautious intrigue. Prove your sincerity. A single command hung in the air, echoing through the vast emptiness of the deactivated laboratory. It was a challenge, an implicit test that could determine their fate. Very well, Riss said, his voice steady despite a tightening in his chest. What knowledge do you believe we lack? He gestured toward the array of shattered equipment littering the lab floor. Tell us what happened here and perhaps we can demonstrate our understanding. The control panel hummed, the glyphs swirling faster, their erratic pulsing mimicking the frantic beat of Kira's heart. This station was once a sanctuary, the voice replied, its tone tinged with melancholy, a repository of interdimensional lore guarded by ancient protocols. It paused, as if choosing its words carefully. But your arrival, it has disrupted those protocols. Kira glanced at Reese, sensing his confusion mirrored in her own features. Sanctuary? What does that mean? She pressed, leaning closer to the panel. This place was entrusted with the knowledge of countless worlds, the voice explained, its tone somber. We sought harmony between dimensions, a symbiotic relationship built on mutual respect and understanding. Riss stepped forward, eyes fixed on the pulsing glyphs. And how did our arrival disrupt this harmony? He asked his tone laced with cautious curiosity. The voice fell silent for a long moment, only the rhythmic hum of machinery filling the void. Then it spoke again, its tone laden with grief. We were unprepared for your kind. The glyphs flashed rapidly, their chaotic dance becoming more frenzied. Your technology, your methods, they threaten the very fabric of interdimensional stability. Kira felt a shiver run down her spine. We only wanted to understand, she said softly, trying to reassure both the entity and herself, to help safeguard all worlds affected by the cascade. The voice remained silent for an eternity, the tension in the lab thick as smoke. Finally, it spoke again, its tone surprisingly conciliatory. Perhaps, it conceded, perhaps you do possess the capacity to understand, to work with me, not against me. Kira looked at Riss, her eyes meeting his in a silent exchange of wonder and apprehension, could they truly bridge this interdimensional divide? The voice continued, its tone shifting subtly. There is much to learn, much that must be understood. It paused, then added, but first, you must prove your loyalty. The glyphs on the control panel rearranged themselves into a complex pattern, revealing a single inscription, the test of harmony.
The test of harmony, Riss murmured, his gaze locked on the inscription. He felt a chill despite his enhanced biopack, a sense that this challenge was unlike anything they'd faced before. What does it entail? Kira asked, her voice barely a whisper. The control panel pulsed with an unsettling energy, causing ripples of static in her teeth. The voice held a note of amusement now, tinged with something else, a flicker of anticipation. It is a series of simulations, it explained. Scenarios designed to test your ability to navigate the complexities of interdimensional relationships, your decisions will determine the outcomes, demonstrating your capacity for diplomacy, understanding, and ultimately, harmony. Kira glanced at Reese, her brows furrowing in thought. Simulations? But how? She began, then stopped, realizing the gravity of the statement. The entity possessed an ability to recreate realities, a terrifying and exhilarating prospect. Fear not, the voice interrupted her thoughts, its tone calm and reassuring. The simulations will be non-lethal, merely exercises in perception and decision-making. It paused, adding with a hint of irony. Think of it as a diplomatic training ground, owned through the crucible of simulated interdimensional conflict. All right, Riss said, stepping forward resolutely. He squared his shoulders, meeting the gaze of the pulsing glyphs as if willing them to explain. We're ready. The control panel whirred to life, bathing them in a blinding white light. As their vision cleared, they found themselves transported to a vibrant alien landscape, towering crystal formations reflecting sunlight through a sky painted with multiple suns, strange creatures flitting through the air, chirping tunes that sounded both beautiful and unsettling. Kira gasped, feeling a rush of awe mixed with apprehension. The entity's voice echoed, faint yet clear within their minds. Welcome to Nexus Prime, it said, its tone tinged with something akin to amusement. The first stage of your test of harmony. A wave of energy surged through them, and suddenly, the simulation began. The crystal sands beneath their feet hummed with a faint energy as Riss and Kira gazed upon the alien panorama. Two suns painted the lavender sky in hues of fiery orange and molten gold, casting long, distorted shadows from the towering crystalline flora that carpeted the landscape. Bizarre creatures, resembling iridescent jellyfish with feathered wings, flitted through the air, leaving trails of shimmering dust. Remarkable, Kira breathed, her voice hushed with a mix of wonder and caution. The entity's simulations are incredibly detailed. Rhys nodded, his eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of movement. It's almost too real, he murmured, reaching out to touch a nearby crystal formation. It felt warm, pulsing faintly beneath his fingertips. A voice, disembodied yet penetrating their minds, startled them. Welcome to Nexus Prime, two curious explorers. The voice held an unsettling cheerfulness, lacking any warmth or genuine hospitality. Here, your decisions will have consequences, shaping the fate of this world and those connected to it through interdimensional rifts. A ripple of apprehension ran through Riss as he drew back his hand. He glanced at Kira, her expression etched with a mixture of determination and trepidation. What do you expect us to determine? Kira asked, keeping her voice steady despite the prickling sensation on her skin that heralded danger. Harmony, the voice replied, light dripping from its words like honeyed venom. Within the next hour, a dispute will erupt between two pivotal factions, the Skyweavers and the Earthbenders. They appeared as shimmering figures formed of light within the landscape, their forms shifting and swirling. They both believe they hold the key to restoring balance, but have opposing methods. Your task is to navigate this conflict, broker peace through diplomacy, or witness its disastrous consequences. The voice fell silent, leaving them poised on the precipice of an unknown reality. Suddenly, a wave of energy washed over them, and figures began to materialize around them. Lithe beings with feathers woven into their hair, wielding staffs crowned with shimmering star-shaped crystals. The Sky Weavers. Soon after, hulking figures made of earth and stone emerged, radiating an aura of grounded power, the Earthbenders. Race felt a tightening in his chest as he observed the tension between the groups. Their bodies were taut, their gazes fixed across the crystalline plain, a silent storm brewing between them. The simulation has begun, Race muttered, his voice tense. He was acutely aware they had to tread carefully, that every word, every gesture carried unforeseen repercussions in this delicate ecosystem of simulated realities. 
Kira nodded slowly, her hand instinctively moving towards the communicator strapped to her arm. This wasn't just a test of their knowledge, their ability to strategize. It was a test of empathy, of understanding, an intricate dance with the volatile forces of interdimensional diplomacy. Maintain calm, Reese urged, his voice low but resolute as he met Kira's gaze. Their arrival hadn't been subtle. The shockwaves of their biotech signatures rippling through the simulation itself had drawn attention. The skyweavers, ethereal figures draped in woven robes of glowing silks, stared at them with unnerving intensity. Their faces remained veiled by intricate masks that resembled intricately carved flower petals, each bloom pulsating with a soft luminescence that cast their eyes in an eerie amber glow. The earthbenders, grounded and imposing, seemed less concerned with subtlety. They stood like monolithic statues sculpted from living rock, veins of molten crystal pulsing beneath their skin. A low guttural hum emanated from them, the sound resonating through Riss's very bones. Visitors, drawled one of the skyweavers, their voice a melody that seemed to weave itself into his thoughts as much as it entered his ears. Unforeseen. Unexpected. Riss raised his open palms in a gesture of peace, though he sensed it might be misinterpreted. We come in peace he replied, mirroring the tone cautiously upbeat, yet wary. We are observers, here to understand. The earthbender on their left, its granite brow furrowed, snorted derisively, causing tremors to ripple through the crystalline ground beneath their feet. Observers, he rumbled, his voice a volcanic tremor. Or invaders who seek to disrupt our balance. You cannot simply witness when harmony hangs so delicately in the scales. There is no need for suspicion, Kira interjected, her gaze flitting between the factions. Her years navigating political landscapes on Earth had honed a skill for reading tensions, both visible and subtle. We seek understanding. The outcome of this conflict matters to us, for the sake of— She hesitated, choosing her words carefully, for the sake of interconnected realities. The Earthbender's voice rose again, laced with disbelief. Interconnected realities? Empty words from outsiders who cannot comprehend the gravity that binds these worlds. Riss saw Kira tense beside him. This was a dangerous line to tread. One wrong step could shatter any hope of maintaining peace. He needed to act as mediator before this fragile facade crumbled completely. Indeed, Riss agreed, his voice measured. The fate of multiple realities rests upon the outcome here. Perhaps, instead of suspicion, let us explore the possibility of coexistence. This suggestion hung in the air, a thin thread of hope trying to withstand the storm brewing between these two factions. The Skyweavers exchanged silent glances, their masks seeming less like barriers and more like portals into an unknown, unknowable world. Coexistence, echoed one of the Skyweavers, its voice softer now, tinged with curiosity rather than hostility. A concept, intriguing. The Earthbender grunted, still unconvinced, but Riss saw a flicker of potential in the obsidian depths of its eyes. The path ahead was fraught with danger and uncertainty, but perhaps, against all odds, there was a chance for peace, a fragile beginning in this simulation, potentially echoing through worlds beyond their wildest imagining. There are three truths, intoned the Skyweaver, its voice a chime that resonated with Riss's teeth. Balance is ephemeral, power corrupts all, and harmony can only be achieved through understanding. Its veiled face tilted toward Kira. Tell me, traveler from beyond, do you believe these words hold truth? Kira met the inquisitive gaze behind the woven mask. I believe truth has facets, she countered carefully, her eyes flickering between the two factions, reading their postures for signs of unrest. What appears balanced to one might feel precarious to another. Power, without wisdom, can indeed lead to ruin, but understanding alone isn't enough. It requires action, empathy, and a willingness to compromise. A ripple passed through the ranks of the earthbenders, as if debating Kira's words amongst themselves. The rock giant who had scoffed earlier now stepped forward, its gaze fixed on Riss. Compromise implies weakness. It boomed, the ground shaking with each syllable. Why should a force of true strength bend to the whims of those less grounded? Riss acknowledged the earthbenders' stance without flinching. Strength can manifest in many forms, he stated, choosing his words cautiously. Sometimes, the greatest power lies in restraint, in knowing when to concede as well as to resist. He gestured between the factions with open palms. 
Both sides possess unique strengths. The Skyweavers in connection to the ethereal currents, the Earthbender's mastery over this physical realm. True harmony comes from recognizing and valuing these differences, not striving to eradicate them. One of the masked figures shifted, its mask tilting, as if in contemplation. The balance we seek is fragile, it murmured, its voice like rustling leaves. If we could learn to understand each other's needs. Before it could finish, a sudden tremor shook the crystalline ground beneath their feet. A fissure split open near the assembled groups, tendrils of smoke and ash snaking out from the depths. The skyweavers gasped, their luminescent masks dimming in alarm. The earthbenders roared, their rocky forms hardening as they braced for the unknown. Reese exchanged a concerned glance with Kira, a sense of dread settling over them like a shroud. Whatever had just awakened was potent, unpredictable, and it seemed intent on disrupting the already delicate balance between these factions. This wasn't just a simulation anymore, it felt uncomfortably real. A guttural shriek ripped through the tense stillness, a sound that seemed to shatter the crystalline landscape itself. From the depths of the fissure, monstrous figures clawed their way into existence. They were grotesque amalgamations of rock and shadow, eyes burning with malevolent crimson light. The earthbenders roared in fury, charging towards the encroaching horrors, only to be met by a barrage of dark energy that blasted them back. The skyweavers, meanwhile, channeled their ethereal energies into shimmering shields, deflecting the spectral blasts aimed at them. Their luminescent masks pulsed with newfound intensity as they whispered urgent incantations, seeking to bind the creatures back to the abyss from which they came. They are the nightmares birthed from discord, one skyweaver gasped, struggling to maintain their fragile defenses. They feed on chaos, on the very tensions that threaten to tear this world apart. The earthbenders grunted in frustration, their rocky forms pounded by a relentless onslaught of spectral energy. Their leader, his obsidian eyes gleaming with determination, bellowed for unity. Enough with your squabbling, he roared above the din. These foul beasts threaten us all. We fight as one, or fall together. His words resonated through the ranks, igniting a spark of shared purpose. The earthbenders regrouped, their attacks coordinated and powerful. They hammered at the shadowy figures with brute force, driving them back towards the fissures from which they emerged. Kira, observing the unfolding chaos with a mixture of awe and apprehension, felt Riss's hand grip hers tightly. We have to help, she said softly her gaze scanning their surroundings for any possible advantage. But how? Riss, sensing Kira's desperation, looked at the frenzied battlefield. The Skyweaver's ethereal energies were draining fast, while the Earthbenders were being overwhelmed by sheer numbers. They need a focal point, he muttered, his voice barely audible above the clash of rock and shadow, something to anchor their powers. His eyes fell upon a nearby cluster of glowing crystals, pulsating with an iridescent energy that resonated deep within him. Look, he cried, pointing towards the shimmering stones. Those could be our answer. Their only hope lay in weaving a tapestry of light and power strong enough to repel the shadows, a delicate dance of manipulation requiring both their skills and courage. But as they neared the pulsating crystals, something else emerged from the fissure, a monstrous creature unlike the others its form shifting, swirling with pure darkness. Its eyes fixated upon them, burning into their souls with unmitigated malice. This wasn't a simple battle anymore. This was a fight for survival against an entity of terrifying power, fueled by the chaos unleashed within these fractured worlds. Kira pressed close to Riss as they neared the crystalline cluster, their combined energy fields humming in anticipation. Their intentions were clear, harness these potent sources and weaponize them against the encroaching darkness. The key is synchronization, Riss said urgently, his gaze flickering between Kira and the pulsating stones. Our energies need to converge perfectly on a single output. Before he could elaborate further, a guttural shriek ripped through their concentration. The newly emerged figure, blacker than any shadow they had seen before, towered over them, its form contorted and shifting with impossible speed. Crimson tendrils of darkness lashed out, narrowly missing Kira's shielding energy field. This, this is something else, Kira gasped, 
her voice tight with fear as her shield strained against the relentless onslaught of dark energy. Race steeled himself. He recognized the creature's power, a manifestation of pure discord, fueled by the escalating chaos of the simulation. They couldn't afford to hesitate. Focus, Kira, he commanded, his voice steady despite the roaring battle around them. We channel our energies together into one point, the very heart of these crystals. The ground trembled as the monstrous figure lunged, sending a shockwave through their weakened defenses. Reese met the attack head-on with a surge of light energy, forcing it back only slightly. Kira, sensing her partner's distress, channeled her own essence, weaving strands of luminous power around him. The two energies entwined in a dazzling display of interwoven light and shadow, amplifying each other's strength while drawing upon the latent potential of the surrounding crystals. The pulsating stones responded to their synchronized efforts, bathing the battlefield in an ethereal glow. As Riss and Kira focused their combined energy, a crystalline lance materialized from the very heart of the crystal cluster, radiating with blinding light. Riss, guided by instinct, hurled the beam directly into the swirling darkness at the center of the monster's being. A deafening explosion rocked their surroundings. The monstrous creature shrieked one final time before dissolving into a cloud of harmless smoke and dust. Silence descended upon the battlefield, broken only by the panting breaths of the survivors. Reese stumbled back, momentarily blinded by the spent energy radiating from his fingertips. Kira, her face flushed with exhaustion yet lit by exhilaration, reached for his hand. We did it, she whispered, a smile gracing her lips despite the lingering tremors in their limbs. For now. But as their eyes swept across the chaotic landscape, broken earth, shattered crystals, and the looming shadows of the remaining creatures, they realized their victory was but a fleeting respite. The true battle had only just begun.